Welcome everyone. I'm Coach Neshi with Shooting School Basketball and you are watching Meet Your College Hoops Coach. We get you an inside view with college coaches as we talk about their program and their school. Today, we are happy to have with us Coach Chris Alisi, the head coach at Manhattanville College in Purchase, New York. Coach has just completed his first season as the head coach and had a very successful season, uh, a winning year going 16 and 10. So coach, good afternoon and, and thank you for taking some time to be with us today. Thanks for having me coach, Re really excited to be with you guys here. Thanks. Coach, could you give us a, a description of uh, Manhattanville College? Yeah, Manhattanville is a, you know, it's, it's a residential campus. Um, we're about 30 miles outside of New York City. Um, you know, it's a liberal arts school, but, but really a wide range of academic majors. And, you know, big thing that the college has done in the last year um, is, is, is kind of jump-starting a nursing program, which, mm. you know, we think that's going to be really, really good for, you know, for athletics, for the campus, for – you know, for really for the school in general, um, you know, smaller school, um, about 1,500 undergrads, 2,500 mm. when, you, when you factor in grad students. Um, you know, for me, it was, you know, it's kind of a place that, you know, I've known Manhattanville for so long. When, when I was in high school, you know, they recruited me. I took a bunch of visits up there. A couple guys who I played with at Severian, you know, through the years went to Manhattanville. Um, you know, so for me, it's, it, it's, it's a beautiful place. It's, it's in a beautiful area up in Purchase. Um, I like the fact that we're, you know, 25 minutes from New York City, um, mm -hmm. but we're kind of, you know, in a, in a nice little town too. We, like you said, I think we get the, the best of both worlds on that end. Yeah. And so what you mentioned, the, the nursing program, is that a new program coach or is it something that's just been kind of you know, become a bigger program. It's, at, it's been in the works for, you know, over a year now, I think, at Manhattanville. Um, I think this all got jump-started when, when the College of New Rochelle closed their doors. Okay. You know, New, New Rochelle had a, had a pretty good nursing program with, you know, a couple thousand students, I think. So I think it was more of a, more of a reaction to that. Um, okay. Really, really, you know, I don't think it could come at a better time. Um, you know, obviously nurses in, in May of 2020 are, you know, they're our frontline workers, they're our heroes. My, my sister's a nurse. Um, mm. I just think the, um, you know, the fact that we're rolling out a nursing program, you know, on the heels of a pandemic, um, it's something that I'm really excited about and, you know, I can't speak for them, but I, I'm, I'm pretty certain it's something that the college is really, really excited about. That's great. And uh, so right now, uh, Coach, with your campus, do all the students live on campus? I would say it's about an 80-20 split. Um, okay. 80 stay on campus in the dorms. Um, I, I would say we have about 20% commuters. Um, there's a bus line that goes in and out of campus. Um, we're, we're about five minutes away from the, the Metro North line, um, but, but it's about an 80-20 split. Most of our students and all, my whole team is, you know, residential. They live on campus. Yeah, and that's a, you know, it's a huge advantage having guys. For sure, campus. sure. And I, I saw, Coach, um, that you guys actually made um, a switch to a new conference, and yep. this Actually, this was the first year of that? Yeah. Okay. So I guess, you know, I know that traditionally, um, I guess, not, not, I would say, but years back, I remember the, uh, the uh, Manhattanville being, I believe, years back in Skyline. But then yep. I guess you guys were in the MAC Freedom. Is that right? Yeah. So Manhattanville won the Skyline Conference Championship um, in 2007. The following year, 2008, um, they made the switch to the Mac Freedom League, um, which is a really, really good league. It's a competitive conference. Um, some re really good teams in that league. Um, and they had a pretty good run in there, you know, top to bottom, you know, not just talking basketball. Um, but there were some, you know, I think just some logistical drawbacks to being in that league when you're, 
you know, you're the only school from New York. Yes. Um, you know, what, what, the word that I got, and again, this is only my first year, but in talking to other coaches and, you know, to some players in different sports, really, the travel commitments were a lot. Um, there were a lot of late night bus trips getting back to campus. Um, you know, so this was the first year transitioning back into the Skyline League. And, you know, I think it was a great move for the athletic department and, you know, a really good move for, for our basketball program. You know, we're playing schools that are, you know, 20 minutes away, 30 minutes away. You know, we're recruiting a lot of the same players. Um, it's got like a, you know, it's kind of got like a Northeast conference feel to it in a lot sure. of ways where, you know, on, on the summer circuit, you're, you know, you're kind of out there with the same guys mostly right? You know, from a recruiting right. standpoint. Yeah, well, that, well, that's a good start for you guys, in fact, in the conference coach. And, uh, yep. and I'm sure the skyline as well is, is probably very, very pleased to have you back in. Um, so recruiting-wise, Coach, what would, you know, is, I guess now, as you say, you're recruiting against more schools that are in your conference in the skyline. Um, what would you say might be unique about Manhattanville um, as regards to your recruiting, if you're presenting to a recruit and his parents, what might be unique about Manhattanville as opposed to some of your competitors' schools? You know, I just think the fact that we have a, you know, a beautiful campus, it's, it's 30 minutes from the city, um, really good academic program, wide range of majors and courses of study, um, a pretty comprehensive financial aid package. Mm -hmm. um, I think all of those play a factor when you're, you know, when you're talking about Division three recruits, um, you know, I would say style of play may, may, may be a part of it. Um, you know, we, we, we played at a pretty high pace this year. We scored a lot of points. Um, you know, I just think we have a, you know, we have a pretty good, pretty good situation to sell. Mm -hmm. That's great. And coach, uh, your team, the makeup as regard geographically speaking, uh, presently, like what's kind, what's the makeup? Is it mostly uh, New York area? Do you ha draw some uh, student athletes from outside the uh, New York City area New or New York area? I should say it's a little bit all over the place. Um, we have two guys that are um, natives of Australia. Um, they're back home. One of them lives in Sydney. The other one's on the other side of Australia in in Brisbane, I think. Um, one of our guys, Miami, Florida, um, but, but for the most part, um, you know, New York City, Catholic League kids, a couple Jersey mm -hmm. kids. Um, and for me, that was really, you know, really attractive when, when I interviewed for the job and eventually when I got it because, you know, the way the, the, way the roster was kind of set up um, for what I was stepping into, um, it, it's pretty, pretty similar to the kind of roster I hope to recruit here. Okay. Um, as, as the years go by with, you know, with kids that ultimately kids that come from great high school programs. Um, we have a couple Staten Island guys on our roster. Um, that's, that's home for me. Um, right. So yeah, now the breakup is, you know, it's, it, it's varies a little bit more so than like a Baruch where you're talking about a city university school. Um, you know, we can recruit nationally and, 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 and internationally. Yeah. What then coaching, you talk about the skill sets of um, potential recruits for your program. You know, what what uh, skill sets are you looking for, you know, in the different position players that uh, you're trying to bring into your program, the guards, you know, forwards and big men? Yeah, I mean, I think the game has changed so much, you know, re really in the last couple of years. But you know, thinking back to my college playing days, um, you know, we, we, we played you guys both my years at Baruch. Um, we didn't win any of those games, but they were, they were still good games. But thinking back to when I played, um, you know, you had your point guard, you had your shooting guard, you had your small forward, you had your four man, and you had your five man. I think, you know, I just think the game has changed so much um, as far as like positionless basketball goes. Um, I, I, Personally, I look for skill, you know, skill set mm -hmm. and, you know, ability to handle the ball, ability to shoot the ball, um, competitive nature. Um, we, I would say 90% of our year this year, we, we played four guards at all times. And, 
you know, that five spot, it, it kind of varied between a, a traditional postman and uh-huh. you know, more of like a hybrid big man. But um, ultimately what I'm looking for when, when I'm recruiting and, and, and really as, as far as player development goes is, you know, guys with, with varying skill sets, you know, the ability mm-hmm. to do, you know, multiple things well, um, it's, it's how I like to play. Yeah, I mean, certainly, uh, you know, most of the coaches that I've been uh, speaking to have echoed, you know, what you're saying now, uh, Coach, and, and, you know, obviously that is the way the game has kind of evolved. Uh, the thing about the challenges in Division Three, as, as you know, is that, you know, uh, we, we are not offering scholarships. Right. So, yes, we are still recruiting types of players that we think can fit into our systems. But right. then at some point, ultimately, um, you know, we have to, I, I always felt that we needed to adjust what we ran and how we ran it um, based on our personnel. And at times, you know, and, and I'm sure you'll see your ideal recruits, you know, may not come in a, in a specific year. And then, you know, you have to make some, some minor alterations here or there, right. but certainly the way the game is played now uh, is it is so different with you know with the with the three point shot and the uh, the way the shot clock now is is changing and and will continue to change I believe you know as the years go on, uh, you know I, I I talk about you know my last uh, my last NCAA team uh, in two thousand sixteen. Uh, we uh, we we were in the second round of the NCAA tournament at uh, Christopher Newport, and we we lost to them on in the second night. Um, we lost by three, and for the game, for the entire for the entire game, we took three three point shots. Wow. Two of them, coach, were in the last minute of the game. Right. <laughs> and one, the last one was a uh, like a desperation three. You know, with like two seconds to go. Yep. Um, but, you know, the, the skill sets of, of our team, you know, we pl- actually played three big men, you right. know, who, who didn't shoot threes. Right. Uh, we were kind of atypical, uh, but that was what we had. And, uh, you know, we, we got the most out of it. The, the, the guys did a great job with it. And, uh, but like anything else, I think as coaches, you know, we, we can look at our, our uh, colleagues and their teams. And sometimes, you know, you think, Oh gee, I wish, I think, I wish we had a, a shooter like that, or I wish I had a big, big like that. But the realities are, you know, you, you make the adjustments, I think. And, uh, and then if, if your team buys in and, and do, and they, and do the best they can, uh, you'll come out on the right side. Yeah. But uh, how, how, uh, how are you now with the, in the recruiting process coach? Are you still waiting to hear from people? From kids yep so it's been you know obviously I think for every coach in the country at every level um, an unconventional recruiting cycle you know we're into the the middle of May here and you know in a normal year you're coming off of the April live period where you're you know you're getting your first look at some guys mm-hmm. um, as far as our 2020 recruiting class um, it wasn't going to be a big class for us anyway um, we only graduated two seniors this year. Okay. Um, so we were, we were bringing back 15 guys. Um, you know, we, oh. we've, we've been able to get two commitments, um, you know, that we're really excited about. But, you know, kind of the focus, you know, before everything got crazy was really on the 2021 recruiting class, which are, yeah. you know, those, those rising – I'm sorry, the rising seniors now, now that the school year is over. Um, so what I've, you know, what I've done a lot of is, you know, getting a lot of emails, you know, responding to everybody, watching a lot of highlight tapes, um, you know, keeping in touch with as many high school coaches, as many AAU coaches, and, you know, starting to put together those lists of 2021 guys. And, right. you know, in the hopes that, you know, once things do get back to normal and there is basketball to be played, um, that then we can start to you know, really ramp up those recruiting efforts. But again, I think for, you know, I talk to a lot of division one coaches every day and, you know, most of the guys I talk to are just, you know, they're spending 12 hours a day with the transfer portal. 
Mm. Um, and then from there, I think they're going to, you know, start to look at some Juco guys. I think for us, it's more about just getting familiar with, you know, some, some rising seniors that are, that are good fits for Manhattanville. Um, you know, I know you mentioned it earlier. Um, when you're not dealing with scholarships, I think one of the, one of the most important things in recruiting and identifying potential recruits is, you know, knowing who you should get involved with and knowing who you shouldn't get involved with. And that's where, you know, I like to kind of rely on, you know, my experiences in AAU basketball and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with, with a lot of really good high school coaches in, in and out of the area, um, you know, and, and really kind of go off of their word. And, but it's been good. I mean, it's been a, again, it's been different, but, you know, any chance you get to interact with, you know, with, with young kids that are looking to play college basketball for me is it's really the best part of the job. So, you know, in a right. lot of ways it's been challenging, but, you know, I'm wearing out my MacBook here watching, yeah. um, you know, watching, watching highlight tapes. Yes. Uh, coach, getting off of the, the, um, the actual skill sets, the, the, the on the court skill sets, uh, are there any not like non-negotiable aspects of the young men that, you know, you'd like to bring into your program? Yep. I call, you know, the, the term that I use is I'm looking for everyday guys. I'm looking for guys who are, you know, committed to, to being a student athlete at the highest level um, every day. And, and, mm -hmm. and you know, there's a lot of elements that go into that, um, you know, above anything else, they have to go to class. They have to, you know, they have to strive to be great students. Um, we were pretty fortunate this last year. We had an overall team GPA of 3.5. Um, nice. You know, words we use, and I think every coach, you know, uses different words every day in their program. But, but we like to talk about accountability. We like to talk about um, commitment, um, you know, and, and at the very same time, you know, the understanding of, you know, what makes Division Three unique is that Division Three student athletes are, you know, student athletes in, in, in every traditional sense of, of the term. They're students first. You know, their classes come first. Their, their internships come first. Um, you know, what we basically ask our guys is for the, you know, the two, two and a half hours a day that we're together in the gym, um, just, just be committed to, to what we're trying to do collectively. And, you know, the rest kind of takes care of itself. Yeah. Coach, uh, bringing up, uh, you know, the uh, kind of the responsibilities and how well you guys did academically, uh, obviously that's impressive. And that's a, a big part of the overall experience, certainly, that we want our athletes to have. We want to be successful on and off the court. Uh, how was your, you know, first year, um, you know, with the program, kind of how did it work for you um did you learn anything as regards to um overseeing your team during the season where they need to balance the academic and athletic responsibilities i think any college coach would tell you the best part of their season is is um in between semesters winter break you know where they're on campus every day um, but they don't, you know, they don't have classes for six weeks. They don't have tests to study for, papers to write. Um, I, I would say the challenges, um, you know, in first semester are, you know, re really balancing um, how busy the, the early part of the season is. You're practicing a lot longer. You're putting, you know, you're putting more hours in, in the gym um, while trying to balance out you know, for our guys, you know, classes in the morning, sometimes taking classes late at night, a couple guys doing internships here and there, a couple guys working part-time jobs. I mean, that's the, you know, the part of Division Three that, you know, I think goes, goes unnoticed sometimes is that, you know, we've got kids that are, in essence, working like 14-hour days when you, when you factor in everything they're doing. So, you know, really, you know, we meet with our guys pretty regularly about time management, about, you know, putting in time in, in, in the library. There, there's mandatory study halls for all freshmen. Oh, is that right? Mandatory study halls for any guys that are below 3-0 in, 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 mm -hmm. in a certain class. So, you know, we try to, you know, try to stay on top of them as much as possible. But, you know, again, I've been pretty fortunate to, you know, to really in, inherit a group of guys that are just super committed to, 
to just being great at everything. And yeah, yeah wow, really lucky with that. Yeah, coach, um, can you talk to us a little bit about like how your practices are structured and what like what the system of practice at Manhattanville is? It do you have a set time during the week or does it vary? You know, based on class schedules, etc. There's a lot of variables that go into um, our practice schedule. Um, number one, we have we have one gym on campus. Um, it's it's a small gym. Um, it's a great home court advantage, but um, logistically, sometimes it's challenging when you have to schedule women's basketball practices, men's basketball practices, um, volleyball when they're in season, um, and then on top of that, we have a a phys ed grad program that uses our gym three nights a week. Uh -oh. So, um, you know, it varies for us. Some, some days we'll go, you know, like a traditional three to five, um, other days we'll practice at night. Some, you know, we got into a pretty good routine last year based on some guys class schedules where we were going at six o'clock in the morning. And, you know, what I found there was, you know, those are some of our best practices of the year because, you know, at six o'clock in the morning, I remember, you know, reading a book when I was you know a little bit younger, um, John Chaney at Temple, um, that was their normal practice slot. You know, his theory behind that was, you know, when you're getting guys in the gym at six o'clock in the morning, they're fresh and they're, there's, there's no distractions from anything that happened that day. Um, you know, as you know, for doing it, you know, as long as you did and as well as you did it, um, sometimes you're getting guys in the gym at three o'clock and, you know, they're coming off of a whirlwind of a day um, mm -hmm. with their classes or, you know, a meeting with their advisor and, you know, it, it can sometimes, you know, it can sometimes affect them on a day to day. So, you know, we, we, we practice all over the place. Weekends are, you know, always a little bit better because you can go a little bit longer, um, right. stretch it out a little bit more, but you know, we make it work. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree coach on the early morning practice. Yeah. I, I would like it, you know, we had done it again. Uh, out of necessity from time to time, kind of probably similar to what you're saying. I think the problem, I think with what Coach Cheney had there, and to me, I toyed with it at, at a couple of times. We didn't, I don't think we ever did it. We may have practiced exclusively twice a week in the early, early morning. But I think if you get them on a regular schedule where you're always doing it at 6 a.m., yep. like then I think, you know, they could get into a routine um otherwise i i you know it's fine it works for a semester but it's harder because you know it's just it's it's not a day-to-day -day routine for 6 a.m right with college students right. <laughs> you know um but the, as you said you know you could be have to me the late night practices that like those were really the worst yep. because you know you would be okay well you want them everybody's there uh you know, you go late at night, but meanwhile, you have guys who have now maybe gone through and they set up their schedule. So they have may have had coming, coming in after taking three or four classes. Right. Now they're coming in and their brains are scrambled. Right. And, right. and you're just, you know, you're wanting them to just get everything out of their head and, and they want to too, but sometimes it's easier said than done. Sure. Uh, so I'm sure for yourself, coach, you know, it's your first year and uh, you know, I, I can remember my first year, like you just want everything to be right. Yep. Uh, you're trying to do everything just to keep it um, as, as much in control as you can, but as much as you want it to be the way you want it. Right. Uh, I, I'm also curious on, on, uh, on practice coach, how, how would you, it's your first year. So how did it go for you as regards to utilizing your assistant coaches, like in practice? I was, you know, pretty fortunate when I got the job. Um, we have a full-time GA spot at Manhattanville, um, which is, you know, pretty unique, I think, for Division Three, and for our conference. So, so my GA, Andre Pennecook, um, you know, he was there last year. Um, you know, he's more of a, you know, full-time assistant than he is a GA in scope. Um, so he was really helpful in the, you know, in the couple months leading up to you know, during the coaching search of just kind of keeping the guys together and, you know, being that point of reference on campus in the basketball office. Um, and then my, my other assistant coach is Brian Sunday. 
Um, you know, he was the head coach at Concordia College for nine years. Oh, okay. um, Division two school right down the road. Um, he's actually the graduate admissions director at Manhattanville. So, you know, the ability to have two guys on campus, um, you know, pretty much full in, in a full time capacity for me, um, it's it's not the norm in Division three. Um, I'd like to think that I utilize my coaches really, you know, really well. Um, we did a lot of skill work um, mm -hmm. as we got into the second semester um, into conference play, you know, practices get a little bit shorter um, and just having the ability to have two, you know, two really good guys to run, you know, run group workouts and, you know, to kind of be in every film meeting and mm -hmm. every player meeting, you know, I've been pretty lucky with, with my assistant coaches. Yeah. That coach, that's, that's great. And, uh, Sounds like uh, on your end, that's a, a, a it's it's easier said than done. I I feel, coach, looking back on my experiences, uh, being able to utilize your assistance effectively, I think, is something that, depending on who you are, might take some time as a head coach because I know for myself, I needed to be more confident in what my assistants could do for me. Now I did have younger assistants and. Uh, I had assistant coaches uh, when I started out that did not have any college experience. Right. So it was a little different. I didn't know them uh, and I knew them well, but, you know, it, it was new for them and, and certainly it was new for me. So it took, a it took time uh, for me to have more confidence in them, more faith in their abilities, and then more faith in my ability to be able to kind of direct them and assist them. Right. So Sounds like you're off to a great start with that coach. That, that's tremendous. And, um, you know, I know that, uh, you know, you have Staten Island uh, young men on your roster and uh, know you probably have, um, you know, some of the young men you're watching right now are obviously in the Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens area and, sure. you know, from that Catholic league. So I think uh, for any of the young men in our programs, you know, with shooting school and the training that we do, um, during these challenging times, uh, I, I certainly feel that, you know, ha looking into schools, a school like Manhattanville and your, and your program, which, you know, is uh, obviously a new coach, um, new energy, um, you know, that's going to be something that I think is going to be very attractive to young men who are, you know, looking at their college options uh, as we go forward here. Yep. So, Coach, this has been great for us, great and informative. You know, I really appreciate your time, um, and I wish you luck as uh, as you complete your recruiting. Um, you know, but it sounds like for you guys, it's more about you know the rising seniors now. So, uh, best of luck, Coach, and uh, hopefully, I'll be able to see you uh, face to face at uh, one of these recruiting venues yep. in the summer. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Hopefully, we'll be. Uh... We'll be doing a face to face at the Atlantic City Convention Center, um, you know, a hoop group event. Um, really want to thank you, though, Coach, for having me on. This has been a blast. Um, that's it. Yeah. Thanks so much, Coach. And I wish you the best. All right, Coach. See you soon. Take care. Thanks.